we're going to start off with the facial muscles, the muscles that are going to make your facial expressions. And in this case, we're looking at the front of the cadaver. And you can see these two muscles that are coming off the lip over here. And this slightly larger one over here is the zygomatic major, whereas the smaller one that is superior to that is the zygomatic minor. And we'll see that relationship between major and minors in other muscles as well. So these ones are going to be your smile muscles. So if I ask you what the action of either of these muscles are, you could just say smile. On the other hand, below here, it's attaching from the bottom lips here, attaching to the mandible down over here. You have the depressor anguli oris. Over here, I'm going to depress and draw the corners of the mouth laterally. It's these guys right here. All right, so smile, depressor, anguli oris. Okay, so smile and frown over here. And to make that fake smile, you want that risorius contracting, pulling the lips straight across there, kind of flat, right? So that's your risorius. And then you have your orabiculus oculi surrounding the eyes. So those are your orabiculus oculi, and these not labeled here around your mouth are your orabiculus oris, right, that are going to close and purse the lips, right, to make that duck face. Right, so those are the muscles of this for this face. Right, next we have a lateral view. Again, we have the orabiculus oculi surrounding the eye. We have the zygomatic minor, the superior one, and then the zygomatic major, right, closing your eye, and then these are for smiling here, but we're seeing that fake smile on the Rosaurus right over here. And then we have that masseter muscle around here from the zygomatic arch onto the mandibular ramus. And then this whole thick sheet around here is your platysma the platysma. And this is helping to actually depress the mandible, that is pull your jaw open. All right, so now again we're looking at the frontal view. Over here we're looking at the neck, again a rare view where you could actually see the platysma over here because usually this is removed to show the more numerous deeper muscles underneath it right there. This over here is your upper trapezius and you can see where it inserts onto your lateral clavicle over here. So this little bit standing out right there is your upper trapezius. Okay, so now here in this picture, the platysma has been removed to reveal these deeper muscles. These are just place markers here showing a couple of the, uh, the veins under here, but you can see this, this big thick muscle here that originates down over here, part of it originates on the clavicle, part on the sternum, and then it inserts up here on the mastoid process. This is your sternocleidomastoid, these left and right sternocleidomastoids. And then again, here's that sternocleidomastoid over here from the side view. But here, he's kind of showing the zygomatic arch right here, where that masseter muscle originates on and then again it goes around the angle you could see you could kind of make out the jaw line over here where that masseter muscle inserts onto okay here's another side view over here in this case different layers have been dissected out to reveal the temporalis muscle so this originates on the temporal fossa over here of the temporal bone and then you can see these long tendons over here, inserting onto the coronoid process over here of your mandible, right? So here's the coronoid process. Back over here would be that condylar process. So you can see how this would, when this contracts, it's going to elevate the jaw. So over here, we have the pectoralis major. You'll see this broad convergent muscle over here, and you could actually make out the three so-called heads you have 
this upper portion right over here connected to the medial part of the clavicle and a little bit of the sternum. And then this middle region right here is connected to the sternum. And then down over here, it'll be connected to the lower parts of the sternum as part of, as well as part of the ribs, right? And they all converge onto the humerus, and in particular around the bicipital groove, right? So on the anterior surface, of the humerus. So that's your pectoralis major. So in this video right here, he's going to dissect and reflect the pectoralis major. So, so you can pay attention over here how this is originates from this broad region because he's going to cut those origins off to retract it to show the deeper muscles here. The pectoralis major muscle. And the easiest way to do that is to find the inferior margin of the muscle and then run your hand uh, medially, and as you're doing that, cutting off the uh, muscle from the underlying ribs and from its attachment to the sternum and also to the clavicle. And this then reflect the muscle in this manner. And you'll notice that you don't have to worry about destroying any of the nerves or the arteries because they're all going to be found on the underside of the muscle. Once you've reflected the pectoralis major from either side, you'll reveal the pectoralis minor. Uh, it's attached to the ribs on the anterior rib cage. You should cut along its uh, margin of attachment and also reflect this muscle as you have the pectoralis major. Okay, so that's how this is cut off. And then the result of this is this reflected pectoralis major over here, and then this will show that pec minor over here. And we could also see right around here, you can see this serration over here. This is showing your serratus anterior over here. That's these muscles right over here. And so you got your pec major, the pec minors, your serratus anterior, and then over here on this star, you could see your anterior deltoid muscle popping out over here. So here is a close-up of those two muscles, the pectoralis major, which inserts onto the anterior portion of the upper humerus there and flexes and adducts the arm, whereas the pec minor uh, coming from right over here is going to insert onto the coracoid process of the scapula. And by moving that, it's going to be able to rotate the arm medially, like pull it in toward these ribs over here. Right, so that's your pec minor, pec major. So here we're looking at the back with none of the muscles dissected yet. We could see this most superficial muscle over here, the trapezius, and that has that kite shaped. And you can see both of them, it's actually starting from way up here. And moving all the way up to the neck. So the origin of the trapezius starts around the occipital bone of the skull and then all along from around C7 over down to T12 over here. So that's the origin of it. And then it inserts onto the scapula, in particular the acromion and the spine of the scapula. And then that upper trapezius is going to insert onto the clavicle. Okay, so this is going to do a couple of different things. You could elevate the scapula when contracted, and it will also extend the neck from this region over here when you. Okay, so here we're looking at your trapezius, and in particular, we're focused in on your middle traps, your trapezius right here. You could look and you could see the fascicles that are running almost directly perpendicular to the long axis of the body to insert onto the scapula, whereas your upper traps have a different angle right there. So if you can make out those fascicles and you can differentiate between the upper, middle, and then as you go down more inferior to the lower traps, you'll see those, you'll see those start to take this sort of direction of the fascicles. So that's your middle traps that's labeled. So that's your trapezius. And then your other large back muscle, 
over here superficially is the latissimus dorsi. This has this broad extension coming off this big flat aponeurosis and then extends all the way out and inserts to a tiny little spot on the humerus. And in particular, it inserts onto the intertubicular groove right around there. So that's on the anterior surface of the arm, even though this muscle is on the back over there. So that's going to the action of your, the action of your latissimus dorsi then is going to either extend, that is pull the arm backwards and then adduct or medially rotate the humerus. The medial rotation part is gonna be due to that anterior insertion over there. Okay, so that's your latissimus dorsi. So here we're going to look at some of the dissections here and just try to follow along as you, you see where the muscles are cut. So you can see where they attack, where they're originating from and where they are going to be inserting into. Do you first start your dissection of the back, you will clean up any subcutaneous tissue. And the first muscles that you see are not uh, true back muscles, but are called extrinsic back muscles. Because although they're located within the back, they're going to exit the back and move the upper limb. Some examples of those muscles would be a large muscle in the upper back called the trapezius. And if you reflect the trapezius muscle, you will find additional limb muscles deep to it, including the rhomboids, and the levator scapulae muscle. All of these muscles will be reflected to see the true back muscles that move the vertebral column. Lower in the back, we've got again a very large muscle that moves the upper limb called the latissimus dorsi muscle. And again, you will reflect these muscles on each side to really get to the muscles that we're interested for this current dissection. So here we are, again with these muscles reflected this is your latissimus dorsi that is reflected and then above that and in inserting into the same location as the latissimus dorsi is this big thick teres minor over here. And in this case, any muscle above will be your teres minor or your infraspinatus muscle, the big one here. The teres minor is usually pretty small and is not always visible. So that's your teres major. That is not part of your rotator cups. That's a helper of your latissimus dorsi. And then over here, because the trapezius has been removed right here, you can see these inner muscles that are inserting onto the medial border or the vertebral border of the scapula right here. This is your rhomboids. It's hitting on the rhomboid major. There's also a rhomboid minor up here that's not clearly distinct from one from the other in this image. So that's your rhomboids, pec major, and your latissimus dorsi. Here's a slightly different picture with the trape trapezius reflected over here so that you could see some of these deeper muscles. So on this side, the trapezius is still intact and you can make out the distinct regions or different parts of the trapezius. Before we mentioned these fascicles that were running pretty much perpendicular around the middle trapezius. And you can see these clearly are different, the direction of the fascicles over here, the difference between the middle and the lower traps. As they get closer, they start to merge and become the same direction. But this is the middle and lower trapezius. And then you have the upper traps over here, some of which is inserted onto the clavicle on the front. So these are all, so that is the three different regions of your trapezius. Okay, and each one might be doing your upper traps in particular, you're going to extend the neck, right? bring it backwards, whereas these are gonna be acting on mainly the scapula. And so with the trapezius reflected, we could make out a couple of those deeper muscles. Once again, the rhomboids over here, the attaching to the medial border of the scapula. They're gonna help adduct the arm by pulling in the scapula as well as a little bit of medial rotation of the scapula, okay? So you don't have to distinguish between these two. There's a minor up here and a major, but this is the rhomboids. And then again, down below it and down here, 
we could see the teres major, this bigger, thick muscle that's going to be inserting into the same place as your latissimus dorsi over here on that bicipital groove of the humerus. And so that's your teres major, your latissimus dorsi, your rhomboids, your upper, middle, and lower traps. And then this last one, and this last one over here is your levator scapula, right? Inserting on the superior angle of the scapula. And when this contracts, it's going to elevate, that is bring up the scapula toward the neck right there. So these are the muscles, superficial and deeper muscles of the back here. And then of course, this is the trapezius that's reflected. All right, so now we're looking at the shoulder girdle and the back of the arm right over here. Here, you can see that the spine of the scapula is labeled, so we're looking at the back of the arm. So that would make this muscle right around here, the posterior delts, whereas this is your middle delts or your posterior head, your middle head. And the posterior delts on the scapula spine. Over here, the middle delts are inserting onto the acromion process of the scapula. The anterior delts are not visible, but would be inserting onto the clavicle in the front over here. But those are your posterior and your middle delts over here. And you can make out, because your trapezius is gone, you can make out over here your supraspinatus muscle. And then underneath the spine over here is your infraspinatus muscle. Okay, so that's the infraspinatus muscle. And then the little one underneath over here is your teres minor. And then this big thick one over here we've seen is the teres major, right? So supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, these three are three of the four rotator cuff muscles. The other one is on the anterior surface. The teres major, remember, is just a synergist of your latissimus dorsi. Right, and then coming back down from the scapula and the humerus is your triceps. There's three heads here. Uh, we're not gonna distinguish between the three heads, but this is your triceps. Looking at the back of the arm, look for this sort of large insertion which will go on to insert onto the alacronin of the ulna bone which is going to when it contracts is going to extend the elbow that's the only movement of the elbow flex and extend the triceps on the back of the arm is doing that extension of the elbow okay next we have the also another posterior view again indicated by this spine of the scapula right over here and in this case the upper traps are still uh, are still connected over here. So this would be the upper traps. Actually, the supraspinatus in this can't be seen right here. So that's your, sup that's your upper traps, uh, and then the spine of the scapula, and then over here would be your infraspinatus muscle, which is going to be originating from that infraspinatus fossa. And then over here, your teres minor. And so one thing we want to make clear is both of these muscles, as well as the supraspinatus, are inserting onto the greater tubercle of the humerus, right? So they all have the same insertion point. Your subscapularis muscle on the front is going to be inserting onto the lesser tubercle. So we have over here your deltoids reflected, your upper traps, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, and then again, this big thick one over here, okay, going at a different angle, you'll notice then your rotator cuff muscles is the teres major. And then again, the back of the arm right here, this is your triceps muscle. Okay, and here we're looking at a slightly different view. In this case, the trapezius has been removed. So we're looking over here at the supraspinatus above the scapula spine, and then just inferior to the scapula spine, coming from the infraspinatus, inserting again onto your 
greater tubercle. Over here is your infraspinatus. And then right underneath that is your teres minor. Again, inserting onto the greater tubercle. And then your teres major. Over here, this is your lats inserting onto the same place as your teres major. major. Your triceps, your rhomboids. Over here, inserting onto the medial border of the scapula. And then over here, we have your levator scapula. Once again, when this contracts, it's going to elevate the scapula. So now we're looking at a couple of the arm pictures at different magnifications or rather different views over here. But notice first, you want to look at that palm of the hand. Right? This is kind of a weird view, but you're looking at the front, right? both of the brachial region and the anti-brachial region. So we're looking at the front right here, which means this is the pectoralis major. Here's your deltoids, your anterior delts over here. And then this is your biceps brachii, the most superficial of those muscles. All right, so again, palm of the hand, these must right here, what we're looking at are some of the flexors. So here we're looking at the close up of the forearm here. And the first biggest muscle, the most lateral muscle over here is your brachioradialis. This is an elbow flexor over here. This doesn't move the wrist. Now we're looking at the back of the arm. Again, there's the scapula spine right here. You can see your deltoids. That happens to be around the middle delt and then your triceps right here. Here we're looking at the front of the arm and this is a close up of this region down over here. On the upper portion here, you have the deltoid muscle, in particular the anterior delts, which are attached to that front part of the clavicle, and the whole deltoids converge onto that deltoid tuberosity on the lateral part of the humerus. And then the two superficial muscles we see right here are going to be the long head and short head of the biceps brachii. Both of these converge onto the radial tuberosity. And you have what's here called the bicipital aponeurosis. That's a tendon sheath running in the opposite direction here. But they both insert on the radial tuberosity. The long head, which is lateral, goes up the bicipital groove of the humerus and then inserts on the supraglenoid tubercle. And then the short head is coming off the coracoid process. And then again, inserting on the radial tuberosity there. And so that's the distal end over here of your biceps brachii. Again, that's the bicipital aponeurosis. The actual insertion is onto the radial tuberosity. Okay, so here you can see the medial epicondyle right here. So this is the most lateral part. And coming from the humerus, the biggest muscle on the lateral side right here is your brachioradialis. Right, so it starts on your humerus and then inserts onto your radius. That's your brachioradialis. It spans the elbow joint, so it flexes the elbow. It doesn't do anything at the wrist. Right, but that's your brachioradialis. All right, so now we are looking at the back of the shoulder girdle and arm. You have this right here is the, right, the scapula spine. So we know we're looking at the back. Here you got your posterior delts, your middle delts, your infraspinatus muscle, your teres minor, your teres major, and the triceps. And here's another view of the anterior surface, right? You're gonna look for the palm over there to show you that it's the anterior surface right over here. So this is just a blow up of this region. This is where you could see the thumb. That way you know that this side over here is lateral and the pinky side is gonna be medial. So once again, this biggest one on the lateral side right here, over here is the brachioradialis, right, the most lateral one. And then the other flexor muscles are all coming off your common flexor tendon up here. This first one is your pronator terrace, inserting uh, from onto the radius, this, 
onto the radius. This allows your arm to pronate when this contracts over here. And then the one right next to it is the flexor carpi radialis. Coming over here, thin one is your palmaris. And so the muscle right next to your flexor, the muscle right next to your flexor carpi radialis. Over here is your palmaris longus. And then this one has got this really long tendon. And on some of the models, you'll see it be superficial to that band of connective tissue that covers most of those tendons. All right, but that's your palmaris longus over there. And then well, here it's not labeled, but any more medial muscle, as you can see going down to the pinky side there, will be your flexor carpi ulnaris. But those are those flexor muscles that you want to pay attention to. Right here we are looking at the back of the arm, which has this extensor compartment. And then this is much smaller than your flexor compartment, but the boundaries will be your ulnar bone on the medial side. And then if this were to curve around a little bit more so you could see the brachioradialis, that would be the border between the flexor, the borders between the flexor and the extensor compartment. But the entire extensor compartment is in this picture within this right here. So for this, these are all coming off your lateral epicondyle. And so before we get to them, remember here's the ulnar bone. On the other side of the ulnar bone, this muscle right over here, which I believe in your pictures, there might be two stars there, but this is your flexor, flexor carpi ulnaris, right? So this is one of your flexor muscles on the anterior side, but it's sticking out. It's one of your bigger muscles, but it's on this side of the ulnar bone, right? So don't confuse that with one of your extensors. Your extensor muscles are all within this compartment. And so what you'll want to do here is find a, a sort of some landmarks here. And you can see these tendons that are being running on to your digits right over here. And if this extensor retinaculum wasn't there, you would see that they all come from this muscle. Right over here. And this is your extensor digitorum, right? And you'll see this again when you look at the front of your leg, you'll see this muscle going down, extending out to the tendons that go to the digits of your foot. All right, so that's your extensor digitorum on your, on your bottom leg, on your lower leg, it's called the extensor digitorum longus. All right, so that could be a landmark, this rather large one, or you can use the ulnar bone. Again, here's the pinky, that's the ulnar bone. And you had your flexor carpi ulnaris sticking out from the flexor compartment. And then right next to that over here, is your extensor carpi ulnaris, right? Going alongside your ulnar bone over here. All right, so you had flexor carpi ulnaris, extensor carpi ulnaris, flanking your ulnar bone. And then next to that, you got that extensor digitorum. And then next to the extensor digitorum over here, it's gonna be split into two smaller muscles, but you'll just know them as the extensor carpi radialis. So this will be this muscle right here. So extensor carpi radialis, extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, ulnar bone, and then flexor carpi radialis. All right, but that's the back of your hand. That's the back of your arm right there and those extensor muscles. So here we have an interior view with some of the organs removed to view some of these really deep muscles, right? And so this right over here, these three, which you can't really quite make out, there's three sheets of muscles here. The one you could actually see, the most deepest one is your transverse 
abdominis. And the fascicles, in this case, are all running sort of transversely when you look at it from the other view. So these would be going straight across. Straight across, they'd be perpendicular with your rectus abdominis, and then you'd also have your internal obliques and external obliques. But these ones that you could see are the most internal ones, and those are the transverse abdominis. Right, those are part of your abdominal muscles. All right, and then you have a couple here that are gonna be attached over to your spine right here. This deep one here, you won't be able to see this in any other view. This is your quadratus lumborum. Over here, there's two. When they are contracted independently, they'll laterally flex your spine one way or another. They'll help that movement right there. But they're all coming from the iliac and inserting somewhere on the spine. You don't have to know the origin or insertion of those. All right, and then down here, right, coming off the iliac, fossa over here and then this one over here is originating around t12 to l5 over there and then both of them are inserting onto the femur in particular the lesser trochanter right so they're going down the frontal side going slightly back uh, behind on the lesser trochanter so these are major hip flexors so this individual muscle Right over here is the psoas major, right over here. And then this one over here is your iliacus, right? Again, this is coming from your iliac fossa, but they're both inserting onto the lesser trochanter of the femur, right? Major hip flexors. Psoas major, sometimes called the ilio psoas because they insert onto the same region. They have similar functions. Although this one, because it inserts up onto the spine over here, also has flexion of the vertebral column as one of its actions. Okay, so here we're looking at the back left leg, right? And this big, large muscle here, originating from the midline, which would be right here, is the gluteus maximus. And these fascicles kind of run down and then insert into the femur, but also this over here, this big band of tendon called the IT band or IT tract, the iliotibial tract. And so the gluteus maximus is coming down here. This, if it extends, will kind of rotate the hip laterally. It'll also, it's also a major hip extender. Okay, so this is going to extend the hip crossing the hip joint over here. And so the other muscle that's seen when you cut and retract and reflect this over here, deep underneath it here with the fascicles actually running in a different direction. And the most, it's on the most lateral part. This is the gluteus medius, right? So the medius pertains to the size, not the position. It's actually more lateral and that explains its function of abducting, abducting or rotating the hip medially. So it's gonna be abducting the hip, that is bringing it out because it's spinning the lateral side of that joint. And it's also gonna be rotating the hip medially. So that's the gluteus medius. Okay, and then coming underneath here, the major muscles on the back of your leg right here, are these are your hamstrings. And from here, you can see this more lateral one. Remember the IT band, that iliotibial tract, is always a good marker to tell you that's the lateral side of the leg that you're looking at. And the muscle, there's two muscles right here. One of them is the biceps femoris, the other one's the semi-tendinous. So the biceps femoris, when you're looking at these other models here, is gonna be the lateral one, because they both look kind of similar, right? But you're gonna to wanna to identify the lateral one as the biceps femoris. Okay, that's this muscle down over here, that's the tendon. The semi-tendinous is on this side, right? So those are the ones marked on this leg. Right now here, we're looking at a little bit of weird angles for these. So you're gonna to wanna to locate 
the knee over here on this side. This one, the knee is a little bit facing so you could see the adductor compartment. Here, the knee, you're kind of looking at the front of the leg and a little bit on the side right here. All right, so in this case, this and this. Here's your rectus femoris. Here's your rectus femoris. And then again, here's the IT band. Right. So inserting, remember on the back, the gluteus maximus was inserting. Also inserting onto the IT band is your tensor fascia, fascia latte. Over here, your tensor fascia latte inserting into the IT band over here, which again, you're going to want to mark that and kind of orient yourself as the more lateral, as the most lateral aspect over there. All right, so tensor fascia latte IT band uh, on this. That's the only one I'm asking for here. It is a little bit of a weird angle. And so here, your rectus femoris, one of your quads. So your quads are going to consist of your rectus femoris and your vasti muscles. And so here is your vastus medialis. And we'll look at another view to see the vastus lateralis, but in general, they will be sitting right under that IT band. All right, so because this is turned in, we can see some of these more medial muscle. These are gonna be your adductor muscles. And this long one over here that's inserting onto the linea aspera, over here is your adductor longus. All right, so that's your adductor longus. And then remember, this is the medial portion right here. This is the lateral. So this is the your inner thigh right here. That's your adductor longus. And then the most medial muscle uh, with these stars right here is your gracilis. That's that one running right down the side right here, your gracilis. Yeah, all right, so those are the front. So these are the front of the leg. And then on this one again, you could see your gluteus maximus. You could see your IT band over here. So this is someone's left leg again. This is the lateral, this is the medial side. And here I am asking for your two of your visible, a prominent superficial hamstring muscles. And that'll be your biceps femoris and your semi tendinous over here, your semi tendinous. Underneath, you'd have your semi membranous. So, if your quads were your rectus femoris and your vastes, your hamstrings are your biceps femoris and your semis, right? semi tendinous and semi membranous. That's one way to remember them. So, those are all the muscles on the cadaver images. These images do not have all the muscles listed in your labs. For example, there are several muscles below the knee that I didn't have images for. So make sure you find the rest on the various models. All right, see you next time.